so this adventure starts um, in the northwest of the Forgotten Realms, and uh, the high road travels from the north from Neverwinter south toward Waterdeep. And a wagon turns off of the high road onto a trail heading to the east. And there's five adventurers on or near that wagon as it makes its way toward Vandalin. So, going back in time a little bit, when you all were in Neverwinter together, let's do some character intros. We'll start with Caliton. Caliphon. Isn't that a great name? Caliphon, there it is. So, Caliphon. There you go. Can you guys hear me fine? Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. Um, So, Caliphon is a far traveler all the way from the peninsula, which I thought was an island until I did some research of Chult from Curse uh, So a uh, Morgoth brewer of the the mead of the continent, but uh, also a monk. So off looking to solve the issues of his peninsula, or is actually, a, Curse of is actually a giant monolith or this towering thing that's always getting attacked. So he's looking to save his homeland. So. There he is. All right. Caliphon. Gimbal. Uh, Gimbal is an autonome uh, artificer. Um, he proudly tells you that he was named after the famous adventurer, Gimbal the Badger Mernig, who single-handedly uh, defeated Tiamat, the Dragon Queen. And he is hoping to follow in his creator's footsteps. Um, if asked about you know how he knows that's his creator, he's a little vague uh, on that because he doesn't remember pretty much anything for, you know, more recent than a couple of years ago. Um, he is traveling to Fandolin to sell uh, Gimbal's Magical Elixir, which is a cure-all made from the venom of the Amphis Bina, uh, as well as some uh, plant oil extract. Uh, and he promises that it would will cure whatever ails you, uh, including boldness. Jariah. Uh, the name's uh, Jariah, Jariah Sakeshawn. Uh, well, I'm a friend of Gunderson and doing some work for him. I figure if we, well, if we travel together long enough, we'll probably get to know each other better. But uh, I like to tinker around with things and use magic here and there. And like I said, uh, I'm just here to get Gunderson's goods where he needs them gone. Uh, Loam. Who artificers, huh? Okay. Um... <laughs> Loam is a elf who was raised in the woods. He's barely had any contact with anyone because his parents were hiding out there for some reason before they passed on. And now he's uh, going out into the wide world to uh, see, meet some people and maybe find out what his uh, parents were hiding from. And Scion. Church Scion. Um, is an elf, but looks old, like really old, even for an elf. Um, and in fact, has just recently reawoken from the dream, which often elves do in order, they go into a dream in order to pass on into the, into the next life. Well, for some reason, (laughs) I didn't pass on into the next life and they just restarted again in this one. So they don't really remember much of their former life or have any of the, or really have much of those skills. Sometimes they can tap into them, but it's a little weird. Um often is uh i mean not that you necessarily know of at, at this time dry um but they uh <laughs> excuse me they're uh, let's see here so they that 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 oh sorry you, you distracted me uh that's okay um so they're have reawoken with, with a purpose um in uh, in in serving uh jurgle uh who was formerly a god of death, uh, but now just uh, is really about kind of a Jurgle has, some of Jurgle's ways have been lost and perverted uh, by the dead three, the gods who took over from them. And so um, just kind of about preserving the ways of Jurgle and about, uh, you know, kind of is against the dead three, but also against uh, abominations in general. And uh, yeah, and most of the point, uh, as far as that, Gundren apparently is a friend. I don't really remember, but Gundren remembers me. So it, that's going to be one of those things where if I know you, you probably remember me, but I probably don't remember you. Okay. So Gundren is your patron uh, for this trip. As you guys are traveling with a large supply of mining goods, traveling from Neverwinter to a small little town called um, Mandolin. Never and- heard of it. <laughs> Yeah, it is uh, not widely known. As you guys are traveling along the Sword Coast, 
The Sword Coast region of the Forgotten Realms is a land where daring souls delve into the wreckage of ancient strongholds and explore ruins of long-lost cultures. Amid a wilderness of jagged snow-capped peaks, alpine forests, lawlessness, and monsters. So you're hired in the city of Neverwinter by your dwarf friend named Gundren Rockseeker to escort a wagon load of mining supplies to Fanolin. Gundren has gone ahead with a warrior, Sildar Hallwinter, to attend to business in the town while you follow with the supplies. You will be paid ten gold pieces each by the owner of Barthen's provisions when you deliver the wagon safely. Gundren was clearly excited and more than a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, saying only that he and his brothers had found, quote, something big. So now we fast forward to, you have left Neverwinter some days ago, traveled south along the high road, and just a few hours ago turned off of the high road onto the Tribor Trail, heading toward Vandalin. And I have a map here with your wagon full of goods and supplies here. You got two oxen on it. Enough room for you all to be seated on the wagon, or walk beside it if you don't want to be riding on the wagon. So I'm going to drag your tokens down there. And why don't you go ahead and tell, or arrange it with uh, what your march order would be. Driving the wagon doesn't require any particular skill. There's two oxen pulling it. Um, if no one's holding the reins, the oxen are going to probably stop wherever they're at. The cargo is, uh, the wagon is packed full of an assortment of mining supplies and food, including a dozen sacks of flour, several casks of salted pork, two kegs of strong ale, Shovels, picks, and crowbars, about a dozen each. And five lanterns with a small barrel of oil, about 50 flasks in volume. All told, you think it's probably worth about 100 gold. All right. So you got Loam and Jiraiya up at the reins. Caliphon walking beside the wagon. Gimbal and Sion riding toward the back of the wagon. When you come around a bend in the road, picture the road that you're on. And around the bend to the left, you see some buzzing flies. And then immediately, you see beyond the flies, an altercation taking place. Uh, show you the map here. So you've been on the Tribor Trail for about half a day. As you come around a bend, you spot two dead horses sprawled about 50 feet ahead. Each has black feathered arrows sticking out of them. The woods press close to the trail here. The woods are thick, difficult terrain, and block line of sight. Just beyond the horses, you see a farmer and his two adolescent sons standing by a grain handcart. They're wielding just simple farm tools, and goblins have them surrounded and are beginning to attack. So, roll initiative, please. Is this something where if I'm casting Gift of Alacrity, it'd be up? I'm yes. Mage armor. Yes, and Mage Armor too. Yeah, uh, I should have given you the chance. Any uh, spells that are all day long, go ahead and say those are cast. All right. The humans see you, and that alerts the goblins to your presence. So there's no surprise for you or for the goblins. You can see three down by the humans and one covering them uh, up above on a steep slope, on the top of a steep slope, with a bow. The adolescent boys are probably around 12, 13 years old, so they could bend a little bit for themselves, but not very much. Probably wouldn't be able to take it on goblins, that's for sure. So the first person to act to all of this is one of the goblins. So one of the goblins sees you and... Because his name starts with a G. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I think it goes by whoever rolls first or something like that. It's all good. All right. So he grabs his scimitar. He's not doesn't have his bow equipped. Um, he goes one, two, three, four, five to there. Points his scimitar at the likes of you. And then seeing that you're kind of armed and got some maybe spellcasters, he kind of ducks in for cover on the wall. And he says, this is none of your business. Be gone. In a really bad common. And... This goblin, uh, da, 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 da. he's uh, wielding a short sword. He's got a soft leather, uh, brown leather shirt and raggedy torn ears. And he's also wearing like what looked like maybe very well-crafted bracers, but he's wearing them like shin guards, like, you know, playing soccer type shin guards. So he's there and ready to Jiraiya, your turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh gosh, how this is. I would like to... Oh, and Jiraiya, just before you go, uh, alone, <clears throat> you nudge Jiraiya and you point up toward the tree line just north of you guys, like this this edge of the tree line right there, and you point out a goblin hiding in the trees. Uh, Jiraiya, you can't see it, um, but you could take an action to make a reception check if you want. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm going to hit... Wow, we're just going to try it. Uh, I'm going to put Grease down over... 
be. It's a 10 foot, 10 foot square. Let me grab a 10 foot square for you. Right. Five foot radius would work. Yep. And I will put That's it That's a right 10 foot there. radius. You want a five foot radius. There we go. Boom. There you go. Uh, I'm going to put that right there. Okay. Nice. Grease, uh, difficult train, wind cast, each creature in the area, see, which are two goblins. They make a 14 deck save or fall prone. Boom, boom. Um, the first goblin fails the deck save. Um, this one wields a sharp broken longsword and flails as she falls on her butt in the grease. The other one staggers a little bit, but holds his footing. Perfect. And then how, how tall is this cliff uh, face to the north here? It is about 15 like feet up there. 15 feet. And over here, I, just, move. just north of the goblins, is a nice little ramp you can run up there. But it's also an easy climb. It just would be a difficult terrain to climb it. I'm going to pop over. I'm going to just pop over here. All right. Try to tuck up under so the guy in the trees can't see me, and then I'll be done. Okay, Loam. You're, uh, you're keen to Elven Vision. You're able to spot a goblin hiding in your favorite terrain, no less. Uh, put him on the map. He's right here. And then... Um, a disconcerting thing about the two horses that you notice pretty right away is that these look to be Gundren's and Sildar's horses. But you see no sign of Gundren or Sildar. Gundren being the dwarf that you're following. They were heading uh, ahead of you guys, him and Sildar, to Phandalin. It looks like they fell into uh, trouble here. Oh, okay. Well, I say, travelers, take cover. We will deal with these knaves. And then... Uh... I shout, stand down before it's too late. I'm going to shoot my uh, longbow at the uh, one closest to me. Unless I can see the, yeah, I'll do, do the one closest to me. Well, it's That's just a miss, barely. Okay, so the commoners, um, they grab uh, just their crude farm weapons. They, this little boy steps back. Gimbal, your turn. All right, so uh, Gimbal's going to move up to the front. And then his right hand is going to kind of like flip down on a hinge and what looks to be a smoke powder barrel sticks out of his uh, armhole and he's going to fire off a firebolt at this guy right here. Okay, fire away. But he misses horribly. <laughs> okay, Sion, your turn. That was a warning shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. So we'll go up to there and then, yeah, uh, I guess we'll just... Uh, on this first goblin right here, we'll just go ahead and uh, pull his dead. All right. First goblin. Wisdom 13. Wisdom. Ooh. And he, yeah. Wise goblin. These, go these goblins are very resilient so, yeah. so far. Yeah. The other child uh, backs up. Then oh, the God. father, he tries to smash that goblin, the club. He strikes him. Just a glancing blow, though. That goblin fights with a short sword, but he holds a short club like stick in his off hand and he's got a split tongue that he flickers at the uh at the uh farmer and the farmer's kind of shivers seeing that uh then the goblin's turn he strikes back at the farmer with his scimitar striking the farmer down uh ooh. the wound to this human is grievous you don't think he's gonna make it he oh, is no. you see the two kids kind of just slump down to the ground under their knees uh, it, aghast in dismay. And then the goblin flickers his yep. tongue. He flickers his tongue at the kids. And let's see. Does he have to do anything for starting in the grease? Only if, if he enters Enter or, or ends his turn. Okay, so he will, after dropping the father, one, two, three, four, five, six. He kind of dances around loam there, flickering his tongue as he does. Uh, if he wasn't a murderous, horrendous, horrendous monster, he'd be a uh, chuckling loam at his little tongue flickering. It's not scary at all, but uh, you're still disgusted by him. Califon, your turn. Can I squeeze between the oxen and the wall, or is that difficult terrain? Uh, hold on. I think I missed one of my goblins. Yeah, yeah, this uh, invisible guy. He's just been up there hiding, waiting. Okay, we will go after you, Califon. Um, yes. Califon, yeah, you can move on. It'd be difficult terrain. You go uh, one... Two and then three, four and then five. All right, we'll do that. And then uh, I don't think I have reach, so I will. You still have. I see the guy in front you still of have, me. You still have five feet of movement. Oh, okay, Roger. And then I will. Uh, I will two-handed whack the uh, the guy here that's hiding. 
Okay. And he will take a strike at you because he's readied. Uh, so first let me do that readied strike on you with the scimitar. He rolls a 13 to hit you, which just misses. No, that's 12. Still misses even more. Uh, your 11 <laughs> is a miss. All right, so I'll hit the I'll hit the, the cliff behind him and scare him. Uh, that was my round. Um, so as a monk, when you use an attaction with an unarmed attack or a monk weapon, you can use a bonus action to make an unarmed strike. You if it's two-handed? Mm-hmm. Oh. Cool. I'm just learning. Uh, and I will unarm. I will kick him with my feet, my talon feet. Go for it. Uh, just missed. All right. All right. No more warnings, guys. <laughs> no, more, hit no more now. warning shots. <laughs> a quick question. Is is uh, is Calif- Califon a, a flightless air cocra? Nope. He can fly. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. You don't know. You haven't seen him fly yet. I don't know. That's, I, I'm yeah. wondering... Maybe he's in, like, from an ostrich line of air coat. So the goblin comes up to the edge of the cliff now, Jariah and Gimbal. You guys can see him. He looks down at the uh, spellcasters in the back. He picks his target, being Gimbal, and fires his short bow at Gimbal. Gimbal, he misses you, luckily, and then he kind of blends back into the trees. And you guys lose sight of him in the forest there. And then the next goblin to go. Uh, this one had a uh, longbow trained on what was going on down below. And uh, she starts singing. As she runs toward you guys, a crude, insulting goblin attacks on that seems to greatly amuse her. Six. She runs over to there, dancing as she goes with her bow. She's a quick and accurate shot, though, with her short bow, even though she's uh, dancing and running as she does onto Loam, striking Loam for four piercing. And then finally, the goblin that had that unfortunate um, drop here, he, um, with the broken longsword, is going to stand up and then move toward you guys. One, two, three... Uh, he will use bonus nimble to... Oh, that is Albany. So he'll close on the elf. And that took a dash. And the goblins are done. And the next to go is the first goblin that went. This one up here with the short sword, the soft brown leather shirt, and the um, shin pads takes his aggression out on Caliphon. He hollers in a high-pitched scream, uh, trying to distract the monk, but it doesn't, and misses. And then Jariah, your turn. That would be me. Uh, so, well, I'm going to move over to get a view to see. So from here, if if I were to thorn whip the singing goblin, do I think that would pull them off the off the cliff if it hit? You do. All right. Then that is what Dry is going to do. A thorn whip, which is going to hit. Uh, I don't know if it hits or not. It's a 14. 14 so one hit. One point of damage. 14 hit. Off that cliff. And you pull a large uh, target up to 10 feet, so you pull... Goblin right off the cliff. It smashes down to the ground there. It's 15 foot fall. So it's going to take 2d6. You can roll the 2d6, uh, Jariah. All right. He's going to say, yeah, I think you're done with that little song. Hell of a lot more damage than the thorn whip. <laughs> <laughs> the goblin <laughs> breaks its neck. Oh, shit. Um, go back and find. The head is like kind of at a horrible angle. You can see now that he's wearing a black woolen cap, or she was, in which she had a peacock feather stuck, but she's dead now. One goblin down. Next to go is Loam. Okay, Loam springs into action. Uh, I'm going to start, uh, s- drop my bow, switch over to my short swords, and uh, attack. One swing for 16. 16 is a hit. Get it. Uh, the northeast or north, or, s- I'm sorry, northeast uh, or southeast? Northeast. Northeast, okay. Four points damage to the northeast one. Offhand swing. Ooh, two hits, another point of damage. Nice. All right, after loan. Yeah. The children hiding there by the wagon. Let's see, the first one uh, crawls over to his father, crying. No. Uh, then Gimbal, your turn. Uh, all right, uh, Gimbal will try to shoot this guy here. <laughs> Excuse me. Holy cow. Holy <laughs> bitch. Did you do that on purpose, Tom? <laughs> mm-hmm. No more and warning then, shots, Gimbal. Yeah. he's going to... Jump down, and he's going to hide underneath the wagon. All oh, right, Sion, your turn. Uh, sure. These three uh, goblins that are down here, uh, they can go ahead and make me uh, charisma saves. Gonna do some bane on these guys. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh nice. That'd be three fails. Three bane goblins. Let's see, I'll use the skulls for that. I didn't think you were a fan of bane. All You're right. Then uh, the other other uh, child comes over there, and uh, 
is crying over his father. And then I was dead. Then the goblin's turn. Okay, a banned goblin here by Loam, having come from the east there, having killed the father. Um, holding a club like stick in his off hand, a split tongue. He uh, slithers a split tongue at you, Loam, and then tries to stab you with a scimitar. Ten is a miss on you, though. Then he's going to do his uh, nimble disengage and try to go. get away from that ranger for sure. One. Three, five, six, and flicks his tongue at you, Sion, as he goes running by you. And then Califon, you turn. I'm going to move 10 feet forward, still staying in melee. I'm going to two-handed swing at the one alone. That's a hit. And that clobbers him, wow. drops him unconscious to the ground. Then I will up uh, and turn around and I'll kick backwards like a donkey, donkey here at Pokra, and kick the guy behind me with an unarmed strike. Uh, 11 miss. 11 misses. Yep. Okay, then the Hiding Goblin. Hiding Goblin. One, two, three. Looking for Gimbal. Not seeing Gimbal. So having to move a little closer to the edge there. Four, five. Comes down to here. Can see Caliphon there in the midst of everyone. And we'll try and shoot down on the monk. The short bow. Missing significantly. And then nice doesn't get all the way back to cover after that. So that was, that was 30 feet. Okay, and then Dead Goblin number one. Take him out. And Dead Goblin number two. Take out. And then, okay, the goblins now are down to three goblins left. Two are dead. So this guy here, uh, just northwest of you, Caliphon, uh, this is the one with the shin guards on. So he's going to try and stab you with a scimitar. Hit oh, for shit. eight, Caliphon. Whoa. And then he'll nimble. Bonus action to get away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Running towards the right. north. Jariah, your turn. You see one to the south of Sion, one on top of the cliff there, one running away. Um, well, shit, I, okay, I could help my Not friends again. get to him. Uh, yeah, I'm going to misty step to here, and then I'm going to come here, and I'm going to try to thorn whip the guy who's running okay. uh, back this way. I don't want him to get away with his crimes. Uh, 15 for two, and I'll pull him back. That's a hit. Two damage. Got it. I'll keep moving. And your turn, Loam. One thorn whipped there by Jariah, one on the cliff to your northwest, and one south of Sion to your southwest. Um, Keep from fleeing. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I, I'm i going to attack with the short sword. Hit and that's kill hit. him. What else, though? Nice. There any left? Uh, there's one to oh, your west one. and one southwest. Okay. After Loam uh, comes Gimbal. All right, Gimbal's going to scurry out of hiding. I was not... Oh, did I have to be prone to get under the wagon? Uh, I was just using that to indicate you were under it, so no, you did not. Oh, okay, good. Um, I'm going to scurry over here, and I am going to uh, feed Caliphon uh, one of Gimbal's magical elixirs, healing him for 11. Nice. Nice. Wow. All right, after Gimbal, Scion, your turn. All right, well, uh, yeah, this guy right next to me is... So we'll just go ahead... He's still Bane, so we'll go ahead and just uh, try and toll his dead as well. Toll the dead with some save. One. That's a fail. He's uh, injured, though, so he takes three. Oh, there you go. Kia. All right, after Scion comes... Goblins. This goblin is the one by you, Scion. Badly wounded. His friends are running and getting killed. He doesn't like the looks of things. He's going to try and do his uh, nimble... I'll try and stab you first with the scimitar so you won't chase him. Misses wildly. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. But it doesn't get into the trees yet. So you guys can still clearly see him running to the southwest. And Caliphon, your turn. Uh, you see uh, one to your northwest on the cliff and one running to the southwest. Caliphon spreads his wings. And I will go 20. See if I did this right. And I will raise up like airwolf um and uh stab the goblin on the edge of the cliff nice visual but you made me feel pretty old (laughs) what's airwolf (laughs) yeah right shut up shane (laughs) (laughs) uh 10 i think 10 misses 10 does miss i will i will hit him with unarmed uh for land yeah okay uh, ten misses again. After Caliphon comes the goblin. The goblin facing you, Caliphon. It's going to try and uh, cut your feathers with a scimitar. Hit for three. Uses nimble. Try and make a run for it. One, two, three, four, five, 
six to there. And then Jiraiya, your turn. Yeah. Two goblins running, Jiraiya. I can't get to either one of them. Uh, let me quick look. Can't do that. Um, so looking back, does it look like the like the father is in a place where a healing spell would help him? Uh, no. The gash no. in the scimitar looks mortal. Right. Then, well, 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 shit. We'll see what we can do. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pull out my light crossbow and try to shoot. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot that one in the back over there uh, that's running down there to the southwest. Okay. And so, oh, 15 Ooh. or 8. Wow. Right between the shoulder blades and the thing sprawls oh. out dead on the ground. Hell, uh, nice shot, Jariah. Hell, okay, yeah, Loam, right, your turn. Well, I guess um, I'm going to try and follow this guy. All right. Yeah, double move. Double move to there, and then Gimbal return. All right. Gimbal's going to move one, two, three, six to there. Can he see the goblin no, through the trees? No, he cannot. Then he will dash. Then Scion. Uh, sure. I'm going to go, let's see here, um, there. Then I'm going to step of the grave. Oh, I guess I, I gotta go one more step of the grave to go there, and that leaves me as a misty step, and then that leaves me five more feet of movement. I'll move to there and go ahead, and um, I'm just gonna try and dagger them for 17 for four. Ooh, that's a hit. Oh, 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 nice. Four damage. Uh, da, 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 da. Califon, your turn. I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna use the butt end of the spear to. Uh, this is the last one alive, right? It is the last one alive. Yep. Right. Oh, I will move over and try to blunt end him of, of the two-handed spear. Okay, go for it. You guys don't need to me- use the measure tool to move. Just move. Oh, yeah. Um, You knock him unconscious. So you got one goblin prisoner, which you can drag back to your wagon. You got the two adolescents grieving over their father. Uh, One of them wipes away the tears from his eyes. Uh, Says his name is Tolwyn. Thank you for saving us from the goblins. We would have all died if it wasn't for you and never seen our mom again. Can you help us lift our dad into the cart? We want to take him home with us. Uh, yes. So they have a little, you know, hand cart, uh, hand grain cart. He also, when you help him load his father in, he hands over to you a jug of beer and a big crumbly currant cake and, and uh, sobbingly thanks you for, for helping him. Uh, Jiraiya only has 12 gold, but he's going to give all 12 gold to the child and instruct him to give it to his, give it to his mom. Maybe that'll help them get through. He, he, uh, give says, all. no, I can't. It's too much. It's too much. <clears throat> Probably more gold uh, than he's seen in his life. I'm not, give, I'm not going to need it. Uh, yeah, Gimbal give it to your mom. Uh, Gimbal offers to sell him one of his magical elixirs for, uh, 12 gold. <laughs> Don't don't listen to that thing. It's it's half fucking broken. It's it's like a like a toy with the busted music box. Anyhow, you get that to your mama. Uh, Will the I'm magic elixir your, help our dad? No, no. If <laughs> magic can save your dad, it, it okay. already will. All right. It's, it's, hard, it's we hard will. to say. <laughs> oh boy, that's dark. Listen, never Good never ball. trust a gnome, and damn sure never trust a gnome that's made of whatever that thing's made of. Probably. All right. The goblins themselves have no treasure, except that one has those shin guards that um, you're sure are more than just shin guards. You take a close look at them, and you believe they are probably bracers of archery. Other bracers etched with archery designs. If you wear them, um, you would have plus two to damage on range attacks with the longbows or shortbows. And you'd be proficient nice. with longbows or shortbows. Oh, and proficient. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, looking at the horses... Like I said, this is uh, Gundren's horse and Sildar's horse, and Gundren and Sildar are nowhere to be seen. So after the boys make their exit, they're heading toward Neverwinter, basically the direction you guys came from, with their handcart. They say their goodbyes, they wish you luck, and they take their father home with their newfound gold. So they're heading out. the horses and then search for uh, uh, some evidence of them being moved or whatever. Okay. So the saddlebags have been looted, for sure. Uh, nearby, you find an empty leather map case. I don't know why it says that twice. And then um, searching the area around. I don't know why it's doing everything twice now. Uh, you find a trail hidden behind the thickets leading to the northwest. 
Um, so you find it's not well hidden. <laughs> you find this trail here, <laughs> head into the northwest. Um, and well, a, if you guys could got actually conscious goblin that we could question, you do. right? Yeah, Loam, could you make for me a survival check with advantage because you have the help of the rest of the party looking around? Sure. Okay, Easy. so twenty-one in the forest. Um, advantage if you're tracking aberrations. You already had an advantage though. Um, this trail to the northwest is used by goblins. They must have ambushed people here before. And they have, you can find drag marks, like they're dragging someone with them. Um, could have been, could have been Sildar, because it looks like there's also dwarven tracks that was being walked to the northwest. So the goblins took, it looks like Sildar and Gundren to the northwest along that trail. Well, we're going to have to follow them. Uh, but there's still Let's go on. <laughs> hope of uh, rescuing them before whatever foul misdeed they do. Now, do you guys want to revive this goblin before you head off? Yeah. Okay. More information can be helpful. Okay. All right. Let's see. This goblin was the one hiding up in the trees up there, right? Um, so she sports various animal tattoos. And uh, when she comes to, she's got a mean, contrarian nature, hissing and growling at you all. Um, very resistant to answering any questions you guys have. But... Whoever your intimidator is can make an intimidation check with advantage to see if you can get something out of her. Who's got a plus uh, one or better on intimidation? I got a negative one. That's better than everyone else's negative. I have a plus two to intimidation. Boom. Looks like it's the uh, the medical droid. <laughs> the interrogation droid. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Gimbal's uh, left, uh, left hand flops down and a, a dagger blade slides out and he uh, goes to menace him her uh Ooh, that's four. nice 16 that's good enough you find out from this goblin um that gundren gundren let's see um well what what questions do you ask where is the dwarf and his bodyguard oh the dwarf has been taken away uh a messenger told our king clark that someone named i think the spider was uh wanting him, and to send him and anything he was carrying on to King Grawl. Clark followed King Grawl's orders. Gundren was ambushed and taken with his personal effects, including a map to King Grawl. Any other questions? How many, uh, how many uh, goblins are at your hideout? <clears throat> Three hands. And tell me about this King Grawl. King Grawl I've never met, but Clark pays fealty to him. Clark's in charge of your band of goblins? Yes, Clark is our leader. What else can you tell me about your hideout? Uh, Sildar is being held at the hideout still in the eating cave. He might already be getting eaten. Oh. Also, Gundren? there's some strange goblins about. They've got elongated skulls and glowing green energy surrounds their weapons when they attack. I don't know who they are. They cackle and they leave after they attack. I think there's some sort of magic about them. Clark won't That's... tell us what they are either. Oh, but they're working with you? Yeah. How about you draw us a map of uh, of the cave? Okay. He draws a crude map of the cave. It looks like um, a main passage heading in. Um, which I'll draw it on the ground here. And I'll draw it in. So if you zoom in toward the wagon, I'll draw it on the ground by the wagon. Okay. There's the main cave that goes in. Oh. And he says, um, the cave goes up a waterway into a cavern with a pool. And off of that cavern is where the king lives. And there's another passage that goes over the top of the waterway to the eating cave where the rest of the goblins live. Are there any traps? Make an insight check. Uh, who's your best insight person? High wisdom, maybe Scion? I got plus five. One. Plus wow. five. Yeah. Go for plus five good. with advantage. Whoever said plus five. Yeah. Get Boom. it. All right. I got a nine. Okay. You think the goblin is holding back info about traps, and you beat it out of him. And uh, you sense that there's some, or he tells you there's some sort of trap where they can flood the main passageway. How do we, uh, how do we get by that trap? Uh, you don't let them flood it. Okay. Is there any, <laughs> any hidden treasure? Because uh, uh, Clark has all the treasure. Is there anyone in there who would help us if uh, we let them live? Um, the goblins don't like Clark. You might be able to get them to team up with you against him. Maybe uh, maybe use the fact that he's working with those 
those green glowy goblins that cackle all the time. The uh, the goblin has this look of great insight, like he would just figure some massive dimension out, and he says, yes, yes, that would work. I can take you to our leader. I mean, not Clark, our other leader. Uh, I think we're okay. i, I got to be honest, I don't trust you enough. I think he's going to be taking another nap while we... Uh, <laughs> Clobber while the while goblin, leave him behind. Oh, hold on. Here, here, why don't... Here, I've got an idea. <clears throat> I will feed him one of my magical elixirs that will force him... If he betrays us, it will cause him to suffer an excruciating death. And I say this out loud where he can hear me. Okay. He tries to not drink it. I, I, I shove it down. I force it down. Or she, I, she, she I, bites I, I, and I claws and, and struggles. And you, you take one point of slashing damage. She wrenches some of your uh, circuits loose. But you get uh, it down her throat. Now, if she betrays us, she will die horribly. She looks very scared. Go ahead make a deception check. I still think we should knock her out, regardless of what this roll is. I, I'm going to use my inspiration because I want this to succeed so okay. badly. Yep, she definitely is in fear for her life now. All right, take us to your leader then. She starts marching on down the trail. So, what are you guys going to do with the oxen and the wagon? Can we like hide it or stash it or? Well, it's going to be tough. Um, find a good place to put it. You could leave it here if you want on the main path. You could. With a bunch of teamwork, get it up one of these side ramps and into the trees a little bit. Uh, keep it out of view of people going down the trail. It might be best. I mean, there's quite a bit of money worth yeah, of stuff in there. Yeah, there's like 100 gold pieces worth of stuff in there. So you want to try and get up this pathway here and kind of hide it in the trees up here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Consider that done. Right, it's in the trees. And you guys form up and get ready to head to the north. So do you want to do any healing or anything before you go that way? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold off. To the north it is. I've only got one spell slot left. So, so. What's healing? And what since you have your uh, charmed goblin, effectively charmed goblin, the goblin what? warns you about a trap, a, um, a snare trap on the walk to the north. So that trail, I'm just going to take you over to map over here. So this is like a, like a mile away to the north. You're traveling along the pathway. And right here, the goblin warns you that there is a deadfall trap right there and so you guys are able to walk around that and continue north then another couple miles to the north as you travel along the road the pathway branches and uh you guys head to this way following the goblin goblin points out a pit trap and you guys walk around it keep going to the north and finally you arrive at your destination gimbal's magical elixir has many different applications just 10 gold pieces a bottle <clears throat> okay. I think I think I just discovered something new. I don't think Roll20 did this before. I did Control Z twice and it backed up twice. I think it only used to do it once. I can't recall doing it twice before. Like, you know, ever using it. Alright, so what do I do to do a picture to everyone? Control Shift Z? Shift Z? Yeah, yeah. There Shift it is. Z. Okay. Okay, so you come to a cave mouth on the side of a hill. Uh brambles and briars all around a a uh waterway coming out of the cave mouth and as you're approaching the goblin that is leading you ululates kind of a high-pitched sound and then a couple goblins step out <laughs> jeez this is I'm having a rough time with my controls it's like it's the first time i'm playing roll 20 again okay um let's see why do i not see that Except preview. there it is okay okay so as you guys are approaching the cave mouth, you can see on the trail, you come across a large cave and hillside five miles from the scene of the ambush. Stepping out from behind some cover uh, is a goblin. And this goblin raises his hand toward uh, the goblin that's with you, whose name is Anwax, you find out. And he says something to Anwax and Goblin. Do you guys speak Goblin? Nope. Uh -oh. I think someone does. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Alice on the Creek. All right, he asks, uh, let's see, I'll put her up here. And you guys can be wherever you want to be behind N1, and wax. I mean. This little stream is pretty small. It's only like two feet deep. It's difficult terrain if you're trudging along the stream, but you can hop, hop over it, no problem. So the goblin hops over to this side from a blind that was around the corner here. Wow. And he calls out to Anwax and Goblin, who are these people that you are with? And Anwax explains that... Uh, they are here to see 
Man. You all are they are here to see Yimik. And he says, Does Yimik know they're coming? And she says, No. And he says, Then they cannot pass. And she says, uh, they could kill you really easily if you don't let them pass. And then it seems like they're kind of de- devolving into like an arguing fight back and forth. And you get the feeling like Anwax isn't well loved by the goblins. She's pretty mean and pretty contrary. And you think the other goblins don't like her very much. And so if there's any chance of getting past this goblin, you guys are probably going to have to intervene. You can tell just by what's going on, like pull her back and do the talking. So with that in mind, does anyone who speaks goblin want to say anything? Well, I um, I will explain what's going on to the rest of the party. Um, a lot of hand gestures because Eric Coker are very Italian. Um, and then uh, I will step forward and not being of great charisma, I will go into this monologue. I will say uh, we are a great uh, venturing party that have heard about the woes you good goblin folk have had. Um, and uh, we're here to assist in maybe getting your power back um, against maybe people that may be oppressing you and uh, forcing you and taking away your treasure, out of the treasure, getting in the way. So that's what we're here for. Uh, go ahead make a persuasion check, DC 15. Is that something I can guidance? Yeah. You can say a little prayer. Yeah, and I'll also I will also use my inspiration. All right, because uh, I got charisma. Well, I don't. Draw oh. guidance themselves. That's my guidance. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use. Didn't have a plus nine guidance. We got it. You're fine. He says, "Go away." No. Or else we'll make you go away. And you can see him signal to some goblins behind the blind. Oh my! Uh, I holler. I, I holler out. Do do you uh, goblins speak or do? You, do you goblins speak common? Uh, da, 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 da. I do. Then let me make an offer to you. For one, if you let us pass, I will give you an amazing magical elixir. One that will cause you to grow at least three inches taller. You could be as tall as a hobgoblin, maybe even as tall as a bugbear. What say you? Uh, make a deception check. Ooh. Uh, He's unconvinced. And he will signal. Well, I, hold, hold on one second. Is is that something that can be guidance? Too late for guidance. You gotta do that beforehand. Before what? It's a spell you cast. Oh, I didn't know if. Oh, it's not a reaction. No, okay. not a reaction. Yeah, not okay. Um, and then I doubt a D four from built for success is going to help with that particular roll. So we will just let that lay. Oh, I'm wrong. It was have... a deception check. You actually succeeded on that. Because you rolled a six, and he had a four on his insight. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, so he believes it, but he still doesn't trust a lot of you. How much do you want for the elixir? I will give you the elixir if you let us meet with uh, whatever the name of that goblin was, Ilya or whatever. Emic. Emic. Mm. Make an insight check, Gimbal. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, you can meet yeah. with Emic. Emic, uh, give me the elixir, and you can pass. All right. Gimbal will give him uh, one of his vials of Gimbal's magical elixir. Okay, you can all move up to where you want to be. So I'll be next to him. As you look up this uh, passageway. Does Gimbal actually believe that this elixir works? <laughs> no. So he takes the elixir from you, Gimbal, and then he uh, hops on back over the water there and That's lets like you pass. Only deception checks, not persuasion checks. So you can see the blind, a small area in the briar thickets that's been hollowed out to form a lookout post. You see wooden planks flatten out the briars and provide room for guards to lie hidden and watch. There's three guards out there, you can see. And then the tunnel that leads up into um, the cave system. If you recall the map that was drawn for you by uh, Anwax, basically led up all the way up into the right to a pool cave. And when you get in there, you can hear the sound of water. Oh, what happened? So, um, who's going to be in the lead going into the caves? Um, I'm going to take the lead. I'm okay. to be fairly stealthy. And Wax, you notice, uh, is very cautious of the cave to the right. There's an opening to the right. And is actually trudging through the water 
and hugging the wall on the left side. And you can see that there are strings of like spider silk that are coming from outside and heading toward that cave. And looking in that cave, you can see inside there um, wrapped up cocoon forms that are roughly dog shaped. Like there's three dogs wrapped up in spider cocoons right inside that cave right over here. And uh, and and Wax gives lots of room. Once Animax passes that, Animax gets back onto the path and starts going in. Now it's pitch dark in here. Although you see a faint glow along this cave mouth, it ascends very steeply, so you cannot see what's up there. But there's like the glow of firelight coming from that direction. Can anybody see in here? I can. And then um, overhead, you can see a bridge that spans the tunnel. And you can see there's a goblin lookout up there. And the goblin sees Anne Wax and sees your group and is uh, extremely startled looking and starts a uh, ululating cry, the same one that Anne Wax did before. And so, could you all please do initiative for me? Yeah. All right. So, Scion, this goblin starts that ululating cry, probably some sort of warning signal. You don't hear anything or see anything responding to it. What do you want to do, Scion? I mean, I'm going to look at uh, Anwax's response. Like, are, are they getting... Oh, are, yeah. Are they... um, Anwax looks startled by that. Uh, like, wasn't suspecting that would happen. And um, says, uh, we might be in trouble. We better hurry. And starts moving towards... Well, starts moving up the passageway. So that bridge is about 20 feet above the stream, overhead. Okay. Uh, so you can walk underneath it and around the corner if you want to keep going. If yeah, you're staying sure. in the water, it's difficult terrain. Uh, like all of it's difficult terrain, or well, the water is. So if you were here and you want to stay on the path, you go one, uh, two, three, four, five of the stairs, six. But let me show you what you see here. Science got dark vision, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So here you come around the corner, and you can see another flight of steps that go up, and you can just see a goblin's shoulder up there around the corner, uh, in the cave ahead. You can see that the river is flowing over like a rock wall that is right here. Um, there must be in this cave like a natural spring or something filling up this pool of water. And you can see uh, maybe 50 feet ahead and to the right, a glow of like firelight. Um, well, if I think they're going to flood it, they've probably got to do something to that rock wall. So I will try. Um, I'll dash. Go there, there, there. Just kind of be in the way of that rock wall. Okay. Uh, when you get up, up there, you can see better what's in the cave all around you. There we go. 92 goblins. So there are three goblins. There is a flight of stairs. That's where the glow's coming from. Uh, right over there. There is a waterfall letting water into the chamber there. Looks like they have a couple rock walls. So they could do a couple of floods if they wanted to. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, and let's see. I rolled those two. I haven't rolled these three goblins. Let me see how they respond. I just walk them on my gay guys. So one's going to so, go right after you. And that one's way down there. Oh, I haven't sorted this initiative yet. And if you're really first, you were really first. Good. Okay. So you go up there, and then the goblin right beside you, startled but quick to react, already was reaching for his weapon with the ululating cry that he heard. He sees you. He knows you don't belong here. He stabs at you with a scimitar. 15 to hit. Miss. All right. Then, da -da -da, next goblin is Anwax. She goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, she bonus nibble seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Dashing into the room there, and then this goblin in the back is like confused by and and wax, and he comes to her and he says something. Sign, do you speak goblin? Uh, no, I absolutely. Do. Okay, so you don't know what they say, but they converse for a brief second. Seems pretty heated. Caliphon, your turn. Mm, I will go to... How high is the bridge? 20 <laughs> feet over your head. So, so I'll go and... Fly up to the bridge? Sorry. Yeah, I was on mute. Okay. I will say in Goblin, hush, we are meant to be here. Stop your childish bane. And that's what I'll do. Okay. Make persuasion check for me, Caliphon. Or deception, whichever one you best at. Wow. 14. Either way. 14. Not bad. Uh, he's confused. And Shariah, your turn. Three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And uh, yeah, that's what I can do. I think dashing up there. All right, Kimball, your turn. Dash one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we got Galvin going there. we go one, two, four. And stab at Sion with the scimitar. Ooh, 21 to hit you, Sion, for three slashing. Yep. Cool. Loam, your turn. Oh, I guess I'm moving on up. To the south. The goblin to your west, Caliphon. He looks at you and then just carefully backs up into the darkness around the corner and stops his ululating cry. Uh, but the other three goblins that you came into this room with, they are all in arms and standing their ground. So, Scion, your turn. And stabbing at Scion. And you guys get the sense that these might be not in any way friends of Anwax's. Like, these might be kind of like an elite guard of goblins and of a different uh, sub-tribe from Anwax. And Anwax isn't liked here at all. So you don't necessarily think these goblins are going to just step down. Right. Um, cool. Well, we'll just, uh, the guy who stabbed me the fr- from the south. Correct. Um, we will try, uh, we'll just trade blows with him. That is a hit for five. No. Then, nice. Goblin to the southwest of you, Scion, stabs at you with the scimitar. Blows a miss. And then Goblin and Wax is arguing with the Goblin in her face there, and she stabs him. Oh, but misses. Shit. Yeah. And then... The goblin facing her stabs her back with his scimitar, uh, misses her, and then Caliphon, your turn. Uh, I walk down one, two, three, four, five into this room. You see uh, two goblins locked in melee with Scion, and two goblins locked in melee with each other, one being your friend. Mm, all right. I'll, I'll bird slap the one that's locked that Scion's fighting. So just unarmed, two unarmed strikes. The first one drops him. What do you want to do with the second? I'll slap him, too. Okay, go for it. Uh, nice. Almost dropped him. Knocked him silly. Oh, yeah. When I'll just pass in here, Coker. Jariah, your turn. Okay, uh, what do I want to do? Uh, so this is the one who's, like, stepping back, right? This one is attacking uh, your friend. Oh, there was the one, one on the bridge over gone. here. This guy that right. did the, the warning cry first. Okay. Uh, Caliphon and him had words in Goblin. You're not sure what they said. And that goblin stepped back. All right, so boom, boom, boom. And so, yeah, so from over here, I want to uh, thorn whip uh, this one right here. Okay. Uh, Hopefully. Uh, We're going to do a 21 for all of two damage. Dropped him. Uh, That's good for me. And then I want to get the fuck out of there. So one, two, 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 four, five. Um, Can I tell how far I have to get in order to not get soaked by, like, to be out of the, like, if they were to collapse that and it was going to flood, to, like, not be in the flood path. If you got south of Gimbal, you'd be good. South of Gimbal. All right, then I will do that and I'll be done. All right, Gimbal, your turn. All right, Gimbal going to move one, two, three to there. Arm cannon on the goblin fighting in. Max hey! Four, nine damage. Oh, that's arm a hit. works. Blew him up. Anorak stabs the body several times and says, okay, we're in. <laughs> good job. Uh, she points uh, towards the pathway behind Caliphon and says um, that that way is where Yemek lives. And then she points to the south, the stairs here, and that way is where Clark lives. Do you think if we kill Clark that uh, Yemek will take our side and let Sildar go? I do. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's take a break right there. Um, and before we go in, if you want to do any hearing, you can. So the fight settles, and again, the roar of the waterfall fills the chamber. Um, You see a dull orange glow coming from the top of these stairs here, the cave that's up there. And that is where Clark is, according to your uh, guide, Anwax. Can I uh, stealth up through some reconnaissance? Are you stealthy? Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Hold on, buddy. Come here. I'll put guidance on you. All right. Take that. Even better. Go ahead, Caliphon. You can move up to up here. Everyone else move where you want to be when Caliphon gets there. Caliphon, make a stealth check for me. Ooh, nice. You see a cave about 25 feet in diameter, roughly round, and a bugbear in there, and a couple goblins, and a mangy-looking wolf, and a whole bunch of trade goods stacked up 
in boxes and barrels and such. The bugbear is sitting on a crude throne that he's made himself, holding court over the goblins, and they did not see you. Fireball. Does anybody have a fireball? No. Uh, under the right conditions, Gimbal's magical elixir can be highly flammable. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> That's a not yet. What's up? <laughs> The, uh, the bugbear and the goblins did seem alert, as if they had heard something, uh, but they didn't see you peek in. I mean, they probably heard how about far, it before you came in. How far from the door is the throne, the makeshift throne? About 30 feet, or no, about 20 feet. Okay. I mean, there's any of them right. blowing goblins up there. All right, if you want to head on in, you can put the first person one square past Caliphon. Caliphon, did you hear me? I'm whispering at you if, if there's any of those green flaming, glowy-eyed goblins up there. There is not. Uh, I didn't see any, no. Um, no. I'm going to cast Guidance on myself and go ahead and step up. Okay. Everyone else get your spells you want to cast on yourselves and then move into where you want to be and then once you're happy where you're standing, roll the initiative. Well, fun. you can use that Guidance that you have for your your, uh, your initiative there, boss, since you didn't use it for your other. Alright. Oh. 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 <laughs> nice, dude. Everyone roll. Everyone adjust their final numbers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's off of, uh, it's alphabetical. You think so? Maybe it is. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Then I'm going to be triple A, Jiraiya, from... <laughs> <laughs> like people used to do in the phone book. Okay. The first of the two goblins steps up to attack Cyan with his scimitar. Fourteen's a miss. The second goblin stabs a Cyan with his scimitar. Ooh, that's a hit for eight damage, dropping Cyan oh, to the bro. ground. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Jiraiya, your turn. Um, fuck. Well, God damn it. Um, well, both those sons of bitches went in. There's, oh, uh, well, well, fuck it. Um, I don't know if that's too, if that's too meta, Tom, let me know. I'd like to step up, and if it's not too meta, I'd like to ready a Cure Wounds, uh, to, to, to put into Scion, uh, once it's, just before Scion's turn. That's fine. Gimbal, go All ahead. Right. That's what I'll do. Okay, well, um... <clears throat> Can I see the goblins from down here, or is it too, too steep of a grade? Uh, you cannot. If you got to where Caliphon was, but you can't attack from there, so you'd have to get to the west of Sion. See? Mm. All right. And the, the cave you're looking into, I should have described it. Sacks and crates of looted provisions are piled up in this large cave. The floor slopes toward a deep pit to the west that descends into darkness. Roar of falling water echoes from the north. In the middle of the cavern, the coals of large fire smolder. And of course, you have the bugbear sitting in throne. Um, uh, I'm going to try to fire bolt the guy in front of me with disadvantage because I'm next to him. Uh, that's going to be 13 for 10. That hit. You incinerate him. <laughs> fire bolt blast straight to the face. <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep moving. So okay. One, two, three, Blow him. Four, Go ahead. Six. Okay. I'm going to step up. One, two. Oops. Nope. Three, four, five. And attack the guy above me or next to me take that that's a hit. six damage and that that is a miss Caliphon, your turn all right i'm gonna move in here oh so uh two-handed spear 15 for four you dropped him Caliphon. Okay. something fate i'm gonna run the sorry it went muted i'm gonna unarm strike Ooh, that's, that's a 24 hit. for six first blood on the bugbear and wax you little lady war cry comes charging forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Double move to there. Done. Bugbear tries to let the bird man have it with his morning star. Out of curiosity, it looks like you didn't get like resorted down there at the bottom with the Oh yeah. Okay. Uh but Birdman yep, dodges yep. Birdman dodges the morning star. Uh Jerry, right. you're gonna do your thing? Yep, yep, yep. Uh there it is. Bam. All seven. Sion, your turn. Uh, I will uh, groggily uh, we'll get, him. <laughs> uh, get up and look a little accusatorily at uh, at, at Jiraiya for not letting me uh, go my way. Um, and uh, it's not work to do. <laughs> and yeah, I know that's why I wanted to to, to not be here. Oh, shit. And uh, then I'll uh, yeah, I will with the snap of a uh, closing book. I will level a nice. guiding bolt Ooh. at the uh, bugbear. All right. 
but only an 11. Ooh, that missed. That would have been real nice. It would have been a lot yeah. of damage. Yeah, the wolf I, I uh, to use my bird. jumps forward to attack the birdman with a bite. That's a 21 birdman for 5 points of piercing damage and 11 strength save, or you're knocked prone. Birdman goes prone. Round is over. Jiraiya, your turn. Well, well uh, I'm going to come over where I can see. And uh, yeah, I just shit. I'm gonna thorn whip the uh, I'm gonna thorn whip the bugbear. Uh, actually, well, shit, I can't do that. Yeah, I'll thorn whip the bugbear. Uh, Thirteen five. Uh, nineteen's a hit for five. because oh, I can count good. Gimbal, your turn. All right, Gimbal's going to move one, two, three, four, five to there, and is going to uh, give one of his real magical elixirs to Caliphon, healing him six. Loam, your turn. Okay, Loam is going to take out that goblin to his south with... Oh, uh, it's actually our friend. Oh, is that the... Okay, well, Clee, you the missed. <laughs> Second <laughs> attack. Uh, on the wolf. 17 on the wolf for four. four okay, damage the wolf. Then Caliphon. Uh, focus fire on the hobgoblin. Uh, two-handed spear. Hit. Oh, jeez. 11 damage. Wow. Nice. And then spin around and kick him right in the Adam's apple. Fifteen's a miss. Knocks it aside. No. Goblin's turn. She screams and ululates and attacks the wolf with her scimitar. Doing three damage to it. Then the bugbear goes. He's fighting for his life now. Attacks Caliphon with his morning star. Ooh. Uh, Twenty-one to hit you, Caliphon, for twelve points of damage. Then with you down, he's going to just step over your body. One, two, uh, three. That provokes from the goblin who swings, missing wildly, and no. uh, he's done. And then Sion, your turn. Um, well, I don't have any spell slots left to Healing Word Caliphon, so we'll just have to uh, toll the dead on the uh, bugbear. It's going to be 11 damage if it works, but the bugbear resists. And the wolf attacks savagely uh, Loam with a bite. Uh -oh. oh, that's a crit loan for 11 points of piercing damage. DC 11 strength save or knocked prone. And then Jariah, your turn. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm going to come down here and try to thorn whip that old bugbear. Okay. Uh, 14, okay, only a 14 is a miss. Loam is standing. Gimbal, your turn. Bugbear is towering over you. I am out of spell slot, so I cannot heal. So I will try fire bolting with disadvantage. Oh, 13 is uh, a miss or 14 is a miss. Loam, your turn. Loam is going to try and finish off that wolf with a blaze of blades. Uh, one strike kills it. And then I'll offhand attack, swirling around to try and finish the bugbear too. Eleven this missed. Time. Caliphon, death Miss. save. One success. Goblin's turn. She steps forward to here to attack the bugbear with her scimitar. Uh, Sixteen for five. Almost finishes him. And then the bugbear's turn. No. And smash Gimbal. With his morning star, uh, seventeen oh. gimbal. The seventeen hit you, gimbal. Hit you. Yeah, seventeen hits. Uh, fifteen yeah, damage. Luckily, it wasn't seventeen damage. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he uh, strides to here. Loam, you can attack on him. I'll take it, but miss. The goblin will take attack. She cuts some hamstrings him, and with a ululating cry, he stumbles and falls over Gimbal's body, dead. She raises her uh, scimitar in in uh, victory and says, "I claim, I claim treasure rights." And starts going and trying to rifle through his body. Uh, we'll stay in rounds here. Um, let's see. That was Scion. Your turn. Uh, move over to here, and I will. Uh, do, do where to go? And I will go ahead and spare the die. Okay, stabilized Caliphon. Rounds over. Jariah, your turn. Uh, I don't have anything that fancy, but I will try to uh, make a medicine check uh, to keep the gnome from oiling out. Okay, a repair <laughs> check almost. Uh, fail, I think. I think it's a 10 in D&D, &D, right? Yeah, it's a 10. Yeah. Uh, gimbal, death save. One success. Loam, your turn. Well, I guess it's time for me to take a shot at uh, staunching the oil. That's but... a fail. Let's see, medicine, you're plus four on, so 99 you got to. Not quite. Caliphon, your turn. You're stabilized. Goblin's rifling through the bugbear's um, belongings and such and comes away empty-handed and then runs over to the crates and starts rifling through the crates. And Sion, your turn. 
Okay, spare the dying on Gimbal. So Gimbal stabilized. And we can come out of rounds. And what are you guys going to do with that goblin that's going to try and take all the treasure it can get? I'm going to let her know that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that not sharing is the same as, uh, as betraying people. And she probably didn't want to do that because of the potion. But I'm more than happy to cut her in with any money we make. But we're not out of this alive yet, so... So you guys can search the chamber here, um, and you find in it... So there's a whole bunch of captured stores from probably various passing wagons and such, um, which will be bulky, and they'll take all you got to get them back to your wagon. But um, they look like they could be worth some money. There's, in addition to all the various stolen provisions, a treasure chest... That contains almost 2,000 copper, uh, 150 silver, two potions of healing, a jade statuette of a frog with tiny golden orbs for eyes, probably worth about 40 gold, and um, Shane, let's see here, if you could roll a d4 for me, and John, roll a d4, and who else lived through that? David, roll a d4. You find a crate, um... Chariya, packed with bottles of fine Golden Fields white wine from Missledale. And Scion, you find uh, two crates of bottled goods from the Dale Lands, including spicy preserved peaches, jellied trotters, white beans, and pickled Archendale crawfish. And Loam, you find several sacks of dried med- medicinal herbs tied in bunches. Um, none, though, are labeled according to their contents. All right, so here you guys are, having gathered all this treasure uh, in Clark's throne room. Looks like all the goblins loyal to Clark are dead, and you have Gimbal non-functioning and Kalatan unconscious. What do you want to do? Um, well, we'll grab the the stuff that we can for now, uh, and then we need to have a, a conversation here with uh, what's your name? Anwax, just about the you know what what are our chances of getting out of here? Not not all of the. Uh, not all of the goblins are, are such big fans of hers. Uh, wondering if, uh, yeah. But we think that the other goblins that are remaining are loyal to Yimik. Yimik, yeah, yes. All the rest of the goblins are with Yimik, uh, except that uh, she uses some goblin expletives and some choice words about the goblin out front, who was an ally of Clark's. Right. And Yimik is across the bridge, she says. Well, that's also where. Uh... That's where the eating cave is. That's where Sildar might be if he's still alive. And that's where that goblin ran off to. That's the problem. Like, yeah. I'd love to be able to, to take a rest here until people wake up. I mean, but that may not I, be the best idea. We've got two healing potions. I mean, we've got two people that are down. We've got two healing potions. I mean, we could get them up right now. Well, I guess the question is, is, well, probably not. Never mind. I was going to say we could get one on, I think Gimbal said they were out of spells. Yeah. Um, but, you know, could always like try getting gimbal up first and seeing if they have any like abilities like uh you know a healer's kit to to get them to one hit point or something like that before we yeah, that get, works. Cali- get caliphone up i mean I'd, I'd love to take a short rest i just don't think we're in a place to do it like, same literally not in a place to do it we don't have potions of healing right i know it's on my toolbar but you found no, we, two we potions just, of healing just now what do you what do you think long i think we gotta heal them up and uh go meet uh Anwax's friends. You also find that this is kind of like a, a refuse dump for this cave, but disturbingly, just part way down, it's full of spider webs. So not a good way to go, you don't think. We could dump the fire down there. <laughs> just in case there's... Okay, uh, healing potion for each of them? Uh, yep, we'll, yeah. we'll do Gimbal first. Okay, Gimbal. Gimbal's got some... Go to roll a healing potion. Gimbal, it should be on your token. Ooh, nice roll. Oh. Max HPs. Gimbal uh, reboots. <laughs> Any his eyes should turn blue when he goes unconscious. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's only when he fails three death saves. Three death <laughs> saves, they go blue. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, Gimbal can try casting Mending on Calathon, but it's unlikely to work. Oh, right. All, All right, right. Well, it takes a minute, him, so, yeah. Yeah, let's give him the potion then. And... Yep. Go ahead and roll your own potion, Calathon. Nice. There you go. I mean, yeah. hey, at least people are getting good use out of these, these potions. I mean... Not to be crass at all, but excuse me, sorry. Uh, if we go talk with the Zemic people, we're probably going to have to share that gold, not just with Anwax, but with. I say we 
we take all the supplies and and, and just give them the copper. And there's like 2,000 coins in this chest. We'll just give them all the coins in the chest. Love it. Sure. And that could work. But, you know, let's see what they want. Uh, uh, here's the thing, Anwex. I mean, do you want us to try to set you up as the leader here? Are you happy being MX second? Like, I feel like we owe you something. Um, <clears throat> She definitely wants to be the leader. You also get the sense there's no way she could ever be a leader. She's far too chaotic and crazy for that. So, yeah, she's all for it. Maybe, maybe you'd be a good, uh, a good, a good, uh, you know, hatchet woman. Lieutenant. Maybe I could be his assassin. Yeah, or like a Captain Cutter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Or if you're looking to go, well, go. You know, I could always use a uh, someone to uh, further the franchise of Gimbal's Magical Elixir Emporium. I like your boxy. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that most I'm going to take that lawful gods are against MLMs. I don't know what you just said to me. I'm going to take it as a sign of disrespect. She says to Gimbal. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, shit. Okay. So you're going to go across the bridge there? I yeah. Get, yeah. With, uh, we got to, like, probably Anwax probably got to be leading the way so we don't just get, like, you know, jumped like it was in the last in in the last cave. Anwax lead the way into the goblin caves. There's a, there's a guard by the bridge again when you guys return. Um, and Yemek talks your guys' way past the guard into the cave over here, so you guys can come up here. And then, uh, I'm sorry, Yemek is here with Sildar. You can see Sildar is a human. He's dressed with uh, Order of the Gauntlet livery, and he is in bad shape. And Yemek uh, drags him over to the edge of the cliff face there, and Anwax tells him what you guys want, you guys want. Sildar back, and Yemek says, "Only for a, uh, only for a great prize would I release this one." And that's when I uh, roll the head of Clark uh, out. All the goblins step back in awe and make an insight check, Scion, with advantage. You can do Best it. Party there. Sure. Uh, let's see if I can get higher than Hell I yeah. this time. Nice. Uh, you can tell that Yemek is delighted. That Clark is dead, but tries to hide it. Yeah. And Yemek says, that's good, but I want coins. Give me his treasure. Give him the... Uh, well, now, I tell you, we now, we could give you all the... Well, we give you all the coins in this here treasure box that we got from his, his lair. If you give me the coins, you can have this human. And, uh, how about... Uh, but... Uh, we, we're gonna need the any of the any of the stuff that the humans had. It's a uh, it's important to them. Uh, he digs up Sildar's equipment, at least what remains of it that isn't part of other goblins' armor already, and and puts it back on Sildar. There, you can have his stuff. Good. Uh, or I will put the the chest of just the copper coins down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right now uh, they will let you leave if you want to leave. Let me let me just uh. Friendly word of warning here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of armed folks coming in because of the trouble that's been rustled up, and so, uh, well, if I were you, I'd, I'd I'd get the hell out of the area. It's about to get real hot, and uh, not for people that like to talk. They're mostly going to be those adventuring types that just you know cut first and ask questions later. Sildar and gathers that- together his stuff and stumbles down the stairs. Yemek says. Uh, we will defend ourselves versus anyone that comes at us. Well, of course you will. And as luck, as, as, as as you walk out, uh, as as uh, fare thee well, Anwax, Slayer of Clark. <laughs> Anwax beams with pride, and uh, Sildar is like, "By Griffin's Talon, I thought I was a goner. They won't believe this back at the Driftwood Tavern. That's for certain." Well, whatever we can do to get out of here, and however I can help, I'll help you. I'm heading toward. Um, Bandolin, you think you could head the rest of the way with me? Yeah, we gotta go move a whole bunch of crates right quick, but then oh. we'll be good to go. I can help with that. I guess I'm a little sore, but ha, ah, it'll be like the old soldiering days. <clears throat> so he'll go help if, you move some crates. Sildar if will. If possible, I'd like to use my intelligence to, 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 to figure out if I can basically make this trap non-functioning, but make it look like it's still functioning. Like oh, being um... Not much. I mean, basically, it's just piled up rocks to keep water in the pool and then knock the rocks down suddenly. Well, there's no, like, lever or anything. No, it's real, real simple. 
and then even if we knock the rocks down now they could find more rocks. rocks yeah plenty but of rocks. it might be worth knocking the rocks down now just so they don't do it on the way out yeah what do yeah, you think that's true let's do that uh sildar shares what he knows while he's helping you guys kind of get some crates going uh sildar tells you <clears throat> he met gundrin and neverwinter and agreed to accompany him to Fandolin. I'm on my way there, he says, to investigate the disappearance of Iarno Albrecht, a human wizard and fellow member of the... Oh, it's Lord's Alliance livery that he's wearing. Sorry. Uh, who disappeared shortly after he arrived in Fandolin. That's why I was heading there. And Gundren was heading the same way, so I thought I'd travel with him. Anyway, Gundren, he let me know before they took him that uh, he and his brothers, Arden and Nundro, the Rockseeker brothers... Had uh, located an entrance to the long lost Wave Echo Cave, site of the mines of the Fandelver Pact. Um, if you have history knowledge, let me know. If you have history skill, I do. Uh, several of us. Several of you have history skill. Okay. I also have history. So that name rings a bell of the Wave Echo Cave. It was more than 500 years ago, to the best of all your recollections, when a clan of dwarves and gnomes made an agreement known as the Fandelver Pact by which they would share a rich mine in a wondrous cave known as Wave Echo Cave. In addition to its mineral wealth, the mine contained great magical power. Human spellcasters allied themselves with the dwarves and with the gnomes to channel and bind that energy into a great forge called the Forge of Spells, where magic items could be crafted. Times were good, and the nearby town of Fandolin prospered as well. A disaster struck when bandits swept through the north and laid waste to all in their path. A powerful bandit force reinforced by evil mercenary wizards attacked Wave Echo Cave to seize its riches and magical treasures. Human wizards fought alongside their dwarf and gnome allies to defend the Forge of Spells, and the ensuing spell battle destroyed much of the cavern. Few survived the cave-ins and tremors, and knowledge of the location of Wave Echo Cave was lost. So if Gundren knows where it's at now, that'd be a immense discovery. Um, Clark, the bugbear who you guys took out had orders to waylay Gundren. I heard from the goblins that Whoa. the spider, I don't know who that spider is, sent word that the dwarf was to be brought to him. I don't know who or what that spider is. Uh, Gundren had a map showing the secret location of Wave Echo Cave, but the goblins took it when they captured him. Yeah, that's what we heard. Yeah. I believe Clark sent the map and the dwarf to the leader of the Kragmaws at a place called Kragmaw Castle. I don't know where that might be, but I think someone in Fandolin might know. Um... Also, he tells you about some strange goblins he saw with elongated heads. And um, the goblin came and, like, stiffed me out. Gave me the shivers. Uh, you. The other goblins didn't seem to know who he, who he was or what he was. And he whispered to me. He said, you're not what Ruxathid wants. Ruxathid. Ruxathid. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm going to go on to Vandalin. It'd be great if you go with me. And... It, and I don't have much. He reaches into like his pouch, pulls out a, a pouch of pipe weed resin for chewing, a small magnetic compass and a battered leather case, a griffin, griffin fledgling feather. He said, this is from Dashkins, my first mount. Good griffin he was. Ah, uh, but you don't care about that? Here, here, this might help you. He uh, hands you like this really small, um, almost like glasses. And he says, uh, his crystal lenses help you to see up close really well. I use them in my old age. But I think they're magical. It might serve you better. Oh, yeah. And then... Okay, as you're loading up the crates, you find one more thing in the crates that you had missed in your first uh, look over them. A javelin with lightning-shaped ends is all coiled up in a leather tarp. Nice. And... Yes, please. Last but not least, as you get in the crates ready to leave, you notice something very disturbing. There is webbing now over the entrance, like spider webs. Nope. Like a spider spun a huge web over the entrance to this cave. Which which cave? Like uh, down here? Right at the main entry, yeah. Right there. Did we already let the water down? Did that happen to knock it out? You did not let the water... Well, you did let the water down, yeah. So it definitely knocked out the lower part of the web. Yep. Okay. And you come around the corner, you look down there, and you see an enormous spider. Uh, like the size of a horse. She loved Spinning a web to block the entry. All right, Lone, you're up. <laughs> I don't think I'm, I'm going to be able to talk talk it out of it. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Well, is there shit, another I'm... way out of here? That's the only way out. I mean, we Figures. could go tell the goblins, and we could work together. I mean, 
it's going to kill them too. They awesome. seem they very are. scared of the thing. They say it's from the spider. It's the spider from the spider. The spider from the spider. He make, Anyways, he I make know, drags. Down. He make drags the chest okay. out. He says, "I'll give you all the treasure back if you kill it." Okay, deal. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna run, run back and light, light a torch. Okay. Uh, the passageway that you guys are in, Gimbal and Caliphon and Loam, it's very steep and not real um, easy to traverse. Fuck him. So if you want to go well, that way, can, you can. But we can go around and come you can definitely go here, around, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh no, you can't around. go there because that's all no. full of webs. Oh, well, I, I say we set that on fire and then come come this way oh. and maybe distract it. Uh, worst case, you know, burn up any other spiders that are in there. Mostly, I just want to set something. The spider seems oblivious to whatever you guys are doing and just making the web to block the exit. Son of a bitch! What? It doesn't seem to even be afraid of you. Well, no okay. blame it. We're not that scary. Caliphon, are you gonna go that route? If you are, I need to know. Or are you going the safe route around? I guess it's it very, is. it's uh, a very, something. it's a very Could steep tunnel, away? all full of scree, and you not enough room to fly. Oh. Oh. Okay, so you imagine if you inflict any kind of attack on it, it will probably come at you, but it's ignoring you at least for now. Well, I mean, we could have someone down there, probably someone other than Loam, <laughs> and then you know, us shooty types can be up here. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess I'm kind of low on hit points at this point. The smidge, yeah. <laughs> hey, Loam, are you wearing those uh, those bracers? Oh now? God, yeah. The archery bracers. Do those require attunement or, they, or not? They do require attunement. Oh, okay. I might be wrong about that. But my notes say they do. Well, do we want to take a short rest before we confront the spider? We seems like try. that's what we want to do. I mean, it seems like we make peace with the goblins. And, I mean, you know, right now the spider is just going to... Uh, I tell you what, though. If you all want to take a rest, I'll watch it. I'm not going to get anything from a rest. Okay. You do a rest? Yeah, yeah I, I'll watch it, too, because I, I, too, will not get anything from a okay. rest. The spider goes back into its cave eventually, having made its web. So go ahead and spend your hit die. Sildar, unfortunately, doesn't have any left. Once you're happy and you want to make a run for the exit, you got to burn through the webs, basically, to get out. We want to run or just plan on killing the thing? Just draw it out and kill it. I mean, what do y'all think? I don't think we're burning through the webs before it comes out and gets us. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Right. I'm willing to hit it with uh, fire and then go and punch it. I'm happy to do that. With the team. Can Sildar get off? Does Sildar have something to shoot the thing with, or is he just going to stand there in the way? I yeah, can give way. him my crossbow. I'll, I'll, I'll give Sildar my crossbow if he okay. helps shoot. He'll take the crossbow and take a position oh. under the bridge there. Kind of fucks me to see what's up a ranged weapon. <laughs> I realize that uh, it's all good. I've got to be 30 feet. but Yeah, see if you guys can, can draw the spider back a little closer this way so we could shoot it from up here. All right. Who wants to go out down to the spider entry? You'd have to basically come down to this square right in front of the door there. I will give that person guidance. Oh, stealth. One more square, Caliphon. Nothing happens when you get there. All right. Everyone get to where you want to be when Caliphon gets there. Everyone roll initiative. Use some guidance. Ooh, strong. Ooh, nice. Plus. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Hell yeah. All right. Carefully step forward, Caliphon. And then all of a sudden, you see it emerging from the darkness scurrying toward you, this immense, huge spider. Gimbal, you'll be able to react as soon as you see it. It's not out yet, though. Loam, you'll be able to react as soon as you see it. Do you guys both want to ready something? Yeah, I'm going to ready a uh, firebolt. Okay. You see Caliphon scrambling, trying to back up. Jiraiya, you can ready something. Uh, already, you know, I'll fuck a thorn with it if it reaches. It's All right. Bad. The spider yeah. shoots a web at you, Caliphon, hitting you. DC 12 strength check or be restrained. You brush Whoa. the webs off of you. You're free. The spider then scurries right up next to you, but that was its action, and it is now Sildar's turn. Sildar still can't see it, and if you can see it yet, Caliphon, your turn. All right, I will bonus action disengage. Oh, shit, I'm wrong. I did that spider thing wrong. You were hit, so you're restrained no matter what. It's a DC-12 strength check as an action to break free. So you're stuck in the webs um, by the spider, and the spider pulls you in, starts reeling you toward it. What? So you guys see Caliphon disappear into the spider's uh, lair. And then, Scion, your turn. Oh, does Caliphon not get to go? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Caliphon. So, Caliphon, uh, you want to do your action to break free? Yes, sir. Okay, you made it. Now what do you want to do? Uh, bonus action. No. If I disengage, what it, if I... So I'll disengage and I can move then. Disengaging yep. is an action which doesn't give you any movement. It just makes any movement you take not um, provoke. But you've already taken action, so you can't disengage. Uh I thought he has a bonus action disengaged, so I said. No, I, I don't. I'm, not yet. Oh. I'm making up. 
I'm making up my own rules. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just walk away very... Okay. You know I'm going to get hit. Spider bites at you as you go. Uh, 18 to hit. Hits. 4 piercing, 12 poison, 11 con save to have the poison. So you're paralyzed now there. At 0 hit points and paralyzed. You're uh, stable but poisoned for an hour and paralyzed when poisoned. Okay, now Simon. Well, this plan is going south fast. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's see. 10, 20. Um, I will spare Caliphon's dying. He's stable, actually. Oh, he is stable? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, stable but poisoned for an hour. Oh, Don't stable. Get the part down. Try, to, try to get him back up or get or lead the spider back up to. Okay. Uh, then from there, I will, yeah, I will just go ahead and try and crossbow him, but click the button. There it goes. 14, uh, 14. hit. Yep. Five piercing. Five. All right. And After then, Scion, then, rounds over. Will Gimbal, your turn. Back out there. Is that as far as you can go? Yep. Shit. All right. I'm just going to ready again because I'm up on a bridge. Loom, your turn. Okay. Well, going to the splash into the water, string my longbow and try and hit it with the arrow. Ooh, nice shot. Looks nice like I damage. did. Nine damage. And you have the short rest. Are you using the bracers now? Yeah. So that'll be 11 damage. Nice. After Loam, Jiraiya, your turn. Yeah. Well, in how long is the drop, like, here, like, you know, off what, the back 20 feet down? Here, like, where Soldar is? 20 feet down. Well, maybe, maybe Scion and Loam can still... All right. I will. I'll go dashing down. I mean, I don't know what else to do. Like, we're not going to get that thing out of here. So us waiting here is just going to die slow. So no, it's twenty. It's twenty feet down. Like down. No, no, no. I I, I ran around. Oh, That's you ran it all the way around. Okay, got it. Okay, spider's turn. Spider comes charging out of here to there. Attack of opportunity. If you got one. Ooh. With plenty of cover. Gimbal, you go first. Dude, can I see it from where I'm at? Barely. Yeah, I'll take barely. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. You hit. Even with all the cover in the world, but you only got one damage as you just barely grazed it. And then Sildar is firing that crossbow. You got it, silly. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, that's a hit for D8. Uh, three damage. Does he get to add his uh, dex, dex to it? Yeah, but it's just ten. Okay, shit. Um, <laughs> yes, but... <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, three plus zero is still three. Okay, Spider comes out of there, gets struck a couple times, uh, tries to bite Loam, dun, 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 misses... And then backs up to into the cover. Scion, if you have a melee weapon in hand, you can attack. I have my crossbow. All right. It is done. Sildar's turn. He's still covering, ready. Caliphon is stable. Scion, your turn. Uh, drop that, switch to my dagger. Um, and then I will uh, go ahead and, since he's got damage on him now, we'll go ahead and toll the dead on him. Oh, for a whopping one, if he <laughs> fails the save. Uh, wisdom. Which he... Doesn't wow. so nobody Jesus. has failed that save for me yet. Nope. Uh, gimbal I'll back up to there. Uh, gimbal going to move here and is going to ready another firebolt. Loom. That's you, David. Sure. A longbow attack. Whiff completely. Jariah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll come down to here and now I will ready. Uh, ready a thorn whip. Okay, the spider grabs Caliphon's body and retreats back up into its webs all the way, dragging yeah. Caliphon's body back up in there. Hey, guys, we can get out now. <laughs> Sildar's turn. <laughs> He's still covering the entry. Caliphon, you're still yeah. stable. Sion, your turn. We're coming, Caliphon. Two, four. We'll go ahead and uh, toll the dead again. Two. Ooh, got hey, it look, time. I did damage. Yay. And can I see that spot right there? No, it's like all full of webs, basically from the edge of the spider back, all full of webs. Cool. You do notice um, something odd. Uh, the three lumps that look like they might have been wolves, uh, one of them is squirming a little, the one closest to you. The one closest to me. Cool. Uh, and then I will... I'm actually going to step the grave to here. Okay. To threaten the spider. So. Okay. Rounds over. Gimbal, your turn. All right. Gimbal's going to dash. Then loom, your turn. Big that. Uh, Miss Jiraiya, your turn. Uh, yeah. So we can see it to shoot at it? Is that a thing? You can see it. It's just got cover. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, I think in the bottom of the house with that. Um, okay, I'm just going to pull it up. 21 for 5. 21 is a hit. 5 finished it. Spider's dead. I'm going to pull the body down to the ground. And... <laughs> got it. Okay. Oh. Um. So you're able to get Caliphon out. You also find one of the wolves is still alive. Oh, I'm going to free it. 
Okay, it's free a wolf. We'll get Loam in here to make sure that it behaves. I'm gonna pet it and give it food. He'll go with you guys. Spider. He'll go with you. What's up, Wolfie? <laughs> Uh, when you get outside, you find the goblins that were guarding the entrance are gone. Mm, shit, I wonder who they were loyal to. Ooh, well, big ass spider started uh, closing up their entrance. I I wouldn't stick around either. <laughs> nope. <laughs> cool. Well, let's yeah, let's let's load up and get the hell out of here. Okay. Uh, Sildar grabs that board that they were using. He he drags it over, and you guys can load up your crates on the board, and then try and drag it all the way back to the wagon oh. that way. We also get the uh, chest of copper coins that the uh, goblins yep. said they Yep, the goblins give me back all your treasure. <laughs> Thanks for taking care of the spider. The goblins obviously were pretty afraid of that spider. And as far as you can tell, it came about the same time as the messenger from, quote, the spider uh, uh, I think arrived. they didn't take a, a trophy from it. Okay. Like, preferably something, I don't, you know, I don't know, a man of black, I don't know, something that would, you know, when we min- eventually meet the black spider, I want to be able to present it to piss them off. Okay. You got it. You got it. So then you guys want to go back to your wagon? Five mile yes. hike? Yeah. Okay. Gather y'all together here. Um, what are you going to do with Caliphon? Uh, I guess drag him. Okay. He's yep. stable. So. Yeah. Yep. And you got a wolf he, friend he might with not, you. He might not be with his head bouncing on the gravel <laughs> as we drag him along. but. You know. <laughs> RL, you can play the wolf or uh, Sildar, your choice. <laughs> the wolf. The wolf. <laughs> got it. Don't, don't get the wolf killed. Get Sildar killed. That's fine. <laughs> all right. You make it all the no way problem. back after your five-mile hike back to the wagons. Yeah. Uh, you find, however, that there are people there rummaging through your wagon. Son of a bitch. Cast guidance on myself. So uh, I'll... You guys arrive there, and these three men look like they're <clears throat> probably like mercenary types or you know, hooligan types are gathering stuff in the wagon. They say, um, is this your wagon? Yes. I was like, yes. In fact, uh, we were just clearing off a goblin menace from those parts. And, uh, you know, and having done so, we're back here to reclaim our goods. We thank you for protecting them. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, in fact, would probably, you know, pay you a small amount of, say, five gold for actually watching over our stuff. But uh, at this point, we say thank you, and, and, and we'll be on our way. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. We'll take five gold each. Sure. No. Do you, uh, I give them each uh, 500 copper pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I offer to uh, sell them Gimbal's magical elixir, uh, which has been known to grant great fortune and bounty to those who imbibe it uh, for a measly five gold. Go to make Normally. A, yeah. um, I was trying to avoid combat, Gimbal. <laughs> Going to make a deception check, Gimbal. Oh, <laughs> not your best day. Not your best sales pitch. They take their five gold and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So Sildar's um, happy to be out there. You guys load up the stuff you found from the cave, and you get on the cart, and you head on toward Vandalin. Uh, when you get to Fandolin, you arrive there, and the first building you come to is Barthen's Provisions. So you're able to uh, take the wagon there, offload it, offload some of the stuff you found um, for a reward if you want. Some of the yeah. some of the uh, like merchant stuff they had taken was from Barthen's Provisions. Some was from a place called Lion Shield Coaster, which we'll get to the next time we play. And we'll stop there. So we got some treasure to split up. You drank all your potions, I think, right? Yeah. But you got three permanent magic items to split up. You got bracers, eyes, and javelin of lightning. None of this is ale. This is all extra. So if you're wanting any of those three, roll a straight d20. I'd like to like those eyes. Anyone else? I'll pass. I'll pass for roll for hit points. Okay. Um, Jiraiya and Gimbal roll again. Jiraiya or Gimbal, what do you want? Uh, you know, I actually will. Is anybody going to take the javelin of lightning? Does anybody want it? Can the monkey use it? I don't and think a javelin is a muck it. weapon. I mean, anyone can use it. I don't think it's a muck weapon. Right, right. I don't really need it. No, I, you know what? I don't. Need, I don't want anything. Okay. Because uh, I, because I know Shane. I, I like the idea of Shane getting the eyes of my newt scene with his okay. character. Shirai, you take the eyes. Yeah, I'd love the eyes. Yeah. And then Loam, you, you take the bracers. Yep. Anyone who if... want the javelin? Nobody else wants to take it. I'll take the javelin. Perfectly useful. Yeah, yeah. it can do a slightly bold thing. Have it with us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you miss, the target doesn't take the damage, but everyone else in the line does, so that's pretty good. 
That's why you throw it at the space behind your target. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> or in space right in front of your target. Okay. Uh, so Scion got goes, the javelin. Oh, no, it goes up to the line. Not, yeah. The total treasure that you guys got in that adventure, let me see. Um, so the treasure chest is 1,700 copper, 150 silver, jade statue, whatever frog. With 40, you got 50 gold pieces uh, for escorting Sildar, 50 gold pieces for delivering Barthens provisions, the goods that Gundren wanted, and 50 more gold pieces for returning the stolen supplies to Lion Shield Coaster. So the grand total there pieces. is 150 plus 175 plus 40, uh, 222 divided by 5. 45 gold pieces each. So 45 gold pieces each. And um, you guys will be second level next time we play. And you'll start on the outskirts of Vandalin. Your view walking into Vandalin is... Let's see. I wonder if you'll see this if I do it from a different screen. You guys see this picture showing up now? No, it has to be from the Same screen. screen. Uh, got it. Yeah. That's all right. You can move it to the screen you're on. Hey, Tom, what's your uh, position on using downtime days uh, to group potions of healing with an alchemy kit? There you go. Uh I don't know. I'll 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 look that up. Um, so there's Fandolin oh. as you guys are walking into Fandolin. Cool. There we are. So that's it for today. Uh, we play again oh, in two cool. weeks. You'll be level two. So send me updated characters as soon as you get a chance.